Hello and welcome to another video about making stuff look good in Unity. This is Shaders102 and in this video we're going to be writing our own image effects. If you haven't seen Shaders 101, you might want to check that out first uh, and get the basics of shadering. Alright, I'm not here to waste your time, so let's shader this bitch. So here we've got a very basic game. It's not really a functional game at all, but instead a bunch of sprites slapped down to look like one. In Shaders 101, we looked at how shaders can control the way an individual object renders. Today we're going to look at how shaders can change the appearance of every single pixel on the screen at once. The cool thing is, image effects really aren't that different from a shader applied to an object. Previously, we colored a quad using the UV coordinates of the mesh. Well, what do the UV coordinates of the screen look like? With image effects, you can think of the screen as one big quad that covers the entire window, and really that's just what's happening on a graphics API level. The scene is rendered as normal with the color buffer being filled up as various objects are rendered out, but before the contents of the buffer are blasted to the screen, we can hook into this final step with onRenderImage. This mono behavior event is raised for all scripts attached to a camera, and it gives us a source render texture containing all the color and depth buffer information rendered so far, and a destination render texture, which is the camera's target, in our case it's just going to be the screen. Okay, let's look at some code for how we can implement on render image. Here's a really simple script we can stick on our camera. Notable in this script, we give it the execute in edit mode attribute so we can preview our image effect in the editor and uh, we declare a public material. This is going to be the material we use to render the screen with. And then we have on render image. The magic function here is really graphics.blit. Think of this function as meaning render this source to that destination with this material. Quick note, when using blit like this, it assigns the source to the main texture of the material we're using. This is literally the texture in the shader called underscore main text. Okay, so that's rendering with a material in a nutshell. Now we need some simple shader to actually test out our new script. I'm going to use a carbon copy of one of the first shaders we wrote in 101. This will render out the UV coordinates as colors and ignore the texture entirely. Now we can put our script on the camera, put that shader on a material, and then put that material on the script and voila! Far from the most useful image effect, but we're getting somewhere. Let's quickly bring in a texture sample and multiply that against the UV color and see what we come up with. Okay, now this sort of resembles some effect you might actually use in your game. I mean like, if you were making some jazz punk-esque acid trip deal. Before we start making anything really wild, let's talk about textures. When you think of a texture, you might think of an image that we can look at and make some sense of. Sprites and unwrapped models are all like this, they're meant to be seen. But really, a texture is just an array of values, and while we typically think of those values as colors, they don't necessarily have to be. In a texture, we can encode whatever we want. The resultant image might look nonsensical to our eyes, but to our shader, that texture can be a lookup table, a height map, a set of randomized noise values, or just about anything else we might find useful to have in a shader. Alright, enough theory, let's see what I'm talking about here. Look at this. What is this crazy mess? It's vaguely red and green with splashes of yellow and darker black regions. It's certainly not a nice pattern we would want textured on an object in our game. Well, what if I told you that the red values could be UV offsets on the x-axis, and the green values UV offsets on the y-axis? Let's look at how this would be implemented and try it out on the demo scene. We'll include a second texture called Displace Text and a range slider called Magnitude. Remember, as well as adding those properties, we also have to define those in the scope of our CG shader. Now check out this fragment shader. We start off by creating a float 2, which we sample from the displacement map with our regular UV coordinates. Next, we multiply that displacement amount by 2 and subtract 1. This takes its values from the range 0 to 1 and pushes them out to the range negative 1 to 1. Then we multiply it by our magnitude variable. Now, we sample our main texture as normal, but we add our displacement value to our UV coordinates. Back in our scene, we'll set up the material and include that crazy red and green mess as the displacement map. Double check that your map is set to repeat and not clamp in the texture's import settings. Now we slap this new material onto our image effect and... nothing happens. Until we dial up that magnitude slider. Dang. Now this is really starting to look like an effect we could actually use in our games. So this crazy mess might look like shit to us, but to the shader it's a thing of beauty. Or something, whatever. 
A common use for this sort of wavy full screen distortion is to show heat. If you've seen the effect before, you know it should be animated in some way to give the impression that the air is so hot it's literally bending the light around it. We can recreate that effect with just one additional line and by using a handy uniform variable called underscore time. Made available through the Unity CG include file, time.x simply gives us the current game time. Why don't you try to animate the shader for yourself in another... Alright, no, we can skip that this time, but definitely come back to this and play around with this shader. Let's step away from using other textures as inputs for a bit and take a look at some other common image effects. Something image effects will often need to do is blur an image. Sometimes you might even just use a blur as an effect itself. So let's implement a very simple box blur. A box blur means that for each pixel, we average its color with that of the adjacent 8 pixels. It's not the nicest looking or the most performant blur, but it's easy to understand and easy to implement, so let's do it up. It's not the most attractive piece of code, but this is what it looks like to sample the texture 9 times for each pixel, adding them all together and then returning that result divided by the number of samples we used. One cool thing I want to point out here is the use of main text texel size. Define this in the scope of your CG shader for an easy way of getting the actual size of a pixel. Remember that when we're working with UVs, numbers range from 0 to 1, so the size of a pixel on the screen is actually going to be like 1 divided by 1920 by 1 divided by 1080, or whatever your game's rendering at. Okay, let's check out this blur in our scene. Did you see it? Given that this video already has some blurring from compression, it's possible you wouldn't even see this tiny amount of blurring. There are a couple things we can do to easily increase the amount of blurring, First and foremost is blurring the blurred image. We'll make a script for blurring that will do a bit more than apply a material to our render. Specifically, it's going to apply the material several times. This is a tricked out version of our simple material applying image effect. Let's go over the changes. We've added a public int with a range slider to control how many blur iterations we perform. We generate a temporary render texture that is the same width and height as our source and then do a plain blit from the source into RT. Now with our screen content stored in RT, we loop over this block of code. In it, we create yet another temporary render texture. Uh, we blit RT into the second temp texture using the blur material. The blurred image should now be inside RT2, so we can release RT. Then we'll set RT to RT2 so that whether we loop around again or exit the loop, our blurred image is referenced by RT. After however many loops we set are complete, we blit RT to the destination and then finally we can release that temporary texture. This process of storing textures here and there temporarily while you build up your desired effect is common practice for a lot of image effects, so hopefully this all makes some sense. Back in our scene, we can test out our new blur and we see the image blurring more as we crank up the number of iterations. It's obviously not a great idea to perform too many iterations, especially given that we're blurring every pixel by sampling the texture 9 times. So let's squeeze out a bit more performance on our blur by reducing the resolution of the image. We'll tack on an int range slider and then in on render image, set up our width and height to be bit shifted versions of the source width and height. In this way, the image will always be scaled down in powers of 2. Testing this out in the scene, we can see the benefit is actually twofold. Not only are we blurring fewer pixels with every iteration, but thanks to bilinear scaling, the downrest image is just naturally a bit blurrier. For comparison, the left side here is blurred 10 times with no scaling, and the right side is blurred just 3 times with a downrest factor of 2. This box blur script and shader will all be linked below in the comments along with other various shaders and resources used in this video. If you're looking to further your knowledge of image effects, the best recommendation I can make is that you go and look at how the image effects included with Unity are implemented. You can see what an optimized blur looks like or how bloom and full screen glow are achieved. Uh, there's fisheye filters, depth of field, yada yada yada. Just tear this code apart and understand how it works. It's one of the best ways to learn how to write your own effects going forward. And that does it for Shaders 102. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm planning at least a dozen other videos in this series aiming at a weekly release schedule. So if you like this stuff, subscribe or come check back next week for something new.